The Lang DDC pump, a great little pump when it first came out with its compact design and somewhat high failure rate. With its bulky Molex connector that is no longer wanted anymore, would you like to upgrade it to the PWM version? Let me show you how. Okay, I think this is a good time that now that we're in here to go over things and show you guys how all the stuff works. Um, this is the old board that came out. It used to be in like this, and you can see I've got all the solder points. That is, you can see it, these little wires here. These are all the coil wires for the for to generating the electromagnetic field. Your impeller here, this has a magnet inside of it. And then when electricity gets passed through each of these coils, that generates an opposing magnetic field. A magnetic field would go this way, whereas the magnetic field in these coils would go that way, which causes this to spin. And that's how this impeller actually spins. And you'll see that when I was desoldering these points around here on the board, that I was using something that's called solder wick. Uh, basically what it is, is it once the solder gets melted, it pretty much wicks it up, kind of like sticking a paper towel in water, it soaks it up. Well, the solder wick will, so will soak up the solder once it's melted. You're not going to get all of it, but you'll get the majority of it. And then from there, I basically just um, melted the remaining solder and then pushed the wire out of the way until the solder had a chance to reharden. Now you can see here com uh, the old board compared to the new board. You can see there's a lot more going on on this board than there is on this one. Like this one even has its own little little bitty transformer here and a lot more ICs and resistors and diodes and stuff than this one does. This one just has a very uh, says a small integrated circuit here and a couple of diodes and resistors um, and then you know there's the the points where you have to resolder the coils back onto and you have and you have your four points here for your wire you can see we've got ground 12 volt RPM and PWM. Your 12 volt and ground, that's actually what supplies your power and actually gets the thing to spin. Your RPM, that's where your tack signal comes from, or a tachometer. That, that gauge that always goes up and down as you're driving in your car. And then PWM, this is the control. This will actually, this is where your motherboard would send the signal to have the IC start lowering voltages and things to slow down your pump or increase the speed. Now these connectors here, these little solder pads on the sides, I have no idea what those are for. Um, this thing didn't come with any type of instructions, but it's pretty self-explanatory. So I'm not even going to, I'll do more research on them and I'll figure that out some other time. But on the four corners here, be advised when you buy this, there are very small LEDs so already soldered onto the board. Okay, so when you go to put this back on, you'll see that on the sides here, there are holes that go all the way through and that's where these LEDs will line up. They'll line up right onto those so that way the light will actually shine through. 
Now if you're really good at micro soldering, you can desolder these. Um, and if you actually like that look or wanted to change it, I guess, if you look very closely, there are two holes right next to the LED where you can take another LED with, you know, with before the things are cut off and solder them into there so that they actually, you know, come all the way up and through into, into here, which that would be kind of cool, but we're just going to stick it with the blue. So if you have a clear top, just remember these have a, these have, do have blue LEDs. So if you have a clear top, you know, your clear top is going to light up blue. Now, when you are putting this back on, you, know, you might be thinking, how do you know which way to put it back on? Well, if you look right here on this side, you'll see this right here. That's where this lines up and that's where your wires come out and the wires get soldered on right here so that's where this is going to line up right like that see that get lined up just like that see how oops, see how the wires are lined up here to there now also when you are taking this apart to, uh, just take in mind that the PCB is actually held in it's clipped in on these four with these four points here but there is also epoxy holding it in so I just used a small flat blade screwdriver to give it a little bit of a flex till you hear the little crack. And that's when the epoxy actually broke free and I was able to lift the board out. So I unclipped it and I lifted it up so that way that it was sitting up here like this. So there's a little bit of a tension. It was actually like kind of bent up a little bit. So that way as I, as I desoldered these, it would actually lift itself up off of the wires. And then I just had to, you know, keep them pushed out of the way until it came all the way off. So that's that for now. Let's get back into putting this thing back together and test it up. That didn't take long now, did it? That was actually very easy. It just popped right on. I just made sure the wires were coming through and I used a pair of flush cutters to get the wires into position. And then I used my flat blade screwdriver just to press them down against the pads and soldered them on. They soldered, they, uh, soldered right on. I used rosin core solder. Uh, basically, it's a lot of times when you do soldering, it's nice if you have this stuff, it's called solder paste. Basically what that stuff does is it helps the solder to melt and helps it flow. Um, when you're soldering, you're not using the soldering iron to melt the solder. Because then all it's going to do is, is it's just going to ball up on the tip like that. What you got to do is you got to use whatever it is that you're soldering. Say you're soldering two pieces of wire together, you want the wire to melt the solder. So that's why when you saw me, I was, I was over here with the soldering iron and then the solder came in. Oops, sorry about that. The solder came in here on the side and the rosin core on this solder is, pr is basically like a solder paste it helps it helps the solder to melt and flow so that got really good contact and it filled up the entire pads on the board now i also did in the meantime do a little bit more research and the reason that there's not as much going on on this board than there is on the factory board is because a lot of people saying that this is overly complicated plus a lot of the stuff that happens on here, that integrated circuit that I pointed out to you guys, that's where most of the stuff happens on this. So, it's all together. Now, in hindsight, I probably should have soldered the wires on first because they have to come in from underneath. Because if you look, before you solder your wires on, if you see, see where that hole is there in comparison, like, like there's the board there, and then here's the hole where the wires actually come out it actually goes down a lot farther 
so the wires aren't just going to come straight out they have to come down and out now you could just easily mod this so that way you know you put a hole right up here so the wires can come straight out um, I'm not going to do that with this one I may do that in the future if, um, when I actually put this pump into use as far as the wires are concerned I got this this is a four pin PWM fan extension Basically, it's a male on one side, female on the other side. This is like you if your wire's not long enough and you're not, you know, good at wiring and you don't want to like solder and stuff like that, you can just buy one of these to extend it. This is, I believe, a 30 centimeter cable. If I wanted to go even fancier, I could mod the side of this so there's a nice big opening here and then take a male header and solder it on like this so it's sticking out so that way there is no wire. All I got to do is just, you know, plug the wire in. But for this, I'm not actually going to do that. Now, let me show you this right here. You see that there's there's four pins, and there's four pins here. Now, most fans are, a lot of fans are the three of the three pin variety, if you've ever seen them. What you have is you have your ground, your 12 volt, and then your tack, your tachometer signal. This, uh, this, this detects how fast it's turning. Um, so, so what you're missing is this fourth pin. This is your PWM. This is the one where your controller sends the signal to the pump to tell it how fast it should be turning. So that's why I went with this uh, four pin PWM, because all I gotta do is cut the end of this off and solder the wires in. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. I'm gonna put this back together and then we're gonna get this tested. Okay, so here we have a quick no frills loop. Um, we have a 360 radiator. Uh, I'm only powering two fans off of it. Um, I only had a two way splitter, and this thing only, this motherboard only has a one single chassis fan header. Um, some rubber tubing, one of those cheap water blocks you get off of Amazon for like 20 bucks, uh, an EK reservoir, and then here's the pump itself. Uh, as you can see, I made this top myself. I didn't have any on hand, so I made one up real quick. 
Um, it's just quick and easy in and out. Okay, so let's go ahead and fire it up, show you that it works. You see that it works. There's the blue LEDs, this one's reflecting off of the fitting. And as you can probably hear, let me move the microphone a little closer. That is running full tilt at about 5200 RPMs. Um, and it is, it is quite loud. Um, you, now, now since we did change it over to a PWM pump, we can go ahead and change the, just the speed. Since it is plugged into the CPU fan header right there, we can go ahead and have this change speed according to CPU temperature. Um, I don't have a hard drive hooked up to this, so I don't have windows loaded. So we can go into the BIOS and actually change the speed of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now with a microphone right next to it so you guys can actually hear the RPM changes. So as you can hear, there is definitely some audible noise difference in the RPM ranges. 5200 RPMs that I'm getting off of this at max is above the factory speeds. I believe that was around 46 to 4200 was the, uh, the factory maximums. And as the RPMs went down, so did the noise level. I'm sure that if you say, if you're gonna mount it, rigid mount it like this on a flat surface, and put some, uh, some foam underneath, that would probably uh, lighten up the noise. However, if you lift this up, it still makes the noise, but it won't vibrate as much against your case, and the noise won't spread throughout the rest of the chassis. Um, right now, this thing is sitting at 2700 RPMs, and it has been sitting here for about five hours, no load, and it's running at about 35 degrees Celsius. So it's not too bad. It was uh, $35 for their board. I'll be sure to put a link in the description so anybody can check it out. And if you're, if you're, if you're decent with a soldering iron, it doesn't need like master soldering skills, just uh, some quick and easy stuff. Um, I'll also leave some links down in the description where you can buy a soldering iron, soldering paste, and um, solder wick. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, show your support, hit that thumbs up button, get subscribed. Show me that you guys are interested in projects like this and I'll keep making videos. Until the next one, Dan out.